And uh, there we go. There we go. Seems like it's going to be a uh, interesting kind of series. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it looks pretty good. I I'm will say, and I, I've so I, I wanted to wait to see this. And obviously, I got to see the series besides the trailer, right? To see how it actually mm. looks. But I wanted to confirm my kind of like assumptions and also observations about what the new MCU television stuff is going to be and it just it's not tv right it's not tv yeah, that's, quality it's that's very much say. just it's like, like a, a it's a, like a qual it's basically a companion piece to the movies right like it's not yeah the quality production is not tv level standard wandavision a little bit but only the parts that are made to specifically yes. be that way for stylistic choices out of that verse right we can feel the once again once we even get out of the first couple of episodes you see that switch in quality like so and that's the other thing so this one's a kind of talking wandavision kind of talking falcon winter soldier and then just kind of making our predictions as the year goes on what kind of movies we think we're going to see because obviously we know we got like the Snyder Cut coming. What else do we even have from DC this year? So DC's got Suicide Squad coming out, I think. Suicide in... Squad 2 will be good. That's going to be soon. great. Uh, with... That one's done filming, I think, too, they said. So that one good, should just good. be going to editing. Um, and then we got, um, yeah, we got your, like I said, Zack Snyder's um, Justice League, which comes out this March 3rd, is it? I think it's the 3rd, something like that. It's very right there. Um and it'll be one of those few reasons I'm glad I have DC partner, right? Uh, yeah, so I don't know if it's all going to release them once or not is one thing. How how mad will the Snyder people be then? And then I, we'll see know, how it is. Why would you? I don't know about doing that like weekly. If you're only going to have four parts, I would I would just yeah drop them all at once. I would I, think. But we'll I think if you do. have anything less than twenty episodes, drop them all at once. But because that's the whole point of doing TV is they run on seasons. Yeah. 22 episodes covers a season of the year and then you know what i mean you have production time between your next season and you have another slot for the next season yeah um and so that in a, in a sense we're we've really been moving beyond that obviously towards netflix stuff and stuff kind of like what marvel's doing but obviously they're still doing the slow release which is kind of just baffling to me i mean i i th- I get it for for a certain reason. Right now, I get it more for the sense that Marvel does not have content to put out That's in that what manner. I, was say. I think it's just more of the content that they they don't have right now, and they're just right because they don't have their own full TV, television lineup, right? Which I these they kind of seem to be pushing towards that. I hope they don't, because once again, I'm really hoping for more unity between them in offering these streaming services. Like I understand mm-hmm. that you obviously want secularness and stuff, but maybe making packages of like similar stuff, right? Like get a superhero package where uh the, the companies are like, all right, here are superhero shows and we'll group them together under this for an extorted price and give out a percentage run of per episode, right? Obviously mm-hmm. they'll never do it because they're super greedy and can't get along and can't get the <laughs> right, can't make figure out the cuts of how many episodes I watched and how many how much percentage should I get, but it's something like that that kind of is rough for me because, like, I don't want everything this that HBO has to offer. Like, I watch very little from HBO Max, I watch very little from, like, certain areas, and then I watch a lot from here, a lot from there. And then when mm-hmm. the seasons change, right, or, like, shows get pulled or different things go out, it goes to the exact opposite. I'm mostly on this one and on this one because I'm not following for the company. I'm following for the, the genre or the yeah. title type. <clears throat> And so I, I would hope that in the future they figure something out with that. And even to the point that, like, it gets really irritating trying to look through old stuff and find stuff. Like, I'm looking for documentaries or, like, um, well, like certain movies. And it's like, oh, yeah, this movie's not available except for on Amazon, but only paid on Amazon. Not Like, even if you have Amazon Prime Video, still got to pay extra six bucks for this movie, which is also super irritating. But Yeah, well, I know HBO is not going that route that's for sure they're they're everything's gonna be uh free as soon as they come so like we'll we'll get um what is it godzilla versus king kong here well they just dropped actually their first movie for the that's in theaters right now i forget what the title is called but it's with um itis uh elba and it just, uh, um ah, i can't remember um, it just dropped. There was actually, who, I'm forgetting it. There's like two famous actors in there, two other, like three all together. 
Um, it was their first movie that they dropped on their lineup that's going to be dropping in theaters and on HBO Max at the same time. The Line or something? I can't remember. We'll have to, uh, yeah, have to look that one up. That, I don't remember off the top. and I, It's not showing but, up immediately, so... Then after that, then like I said, we got the Zack Snyder and Justice League one on March 3rd. Then we'll get um, Godzilla on the 26th. It was supposed to be the 23rd, but then they pushed it three days out uh, to the 26th. You know, I mean, compared to how the pushes have been, I'm really not that, that <laughs> mad at that. It was um, fine. No, that's totally fine. I just thought, I was like, oh, okay, let's go to the 26th then. But, so there's that one. Um, that should end off that month. Uh, and then I feel like Suicide Squad is in the summertime or springtime. So currently we got Snyder Cut March 2021, Suicide Squad August 2021. Okay, August. Um right. Batman from uh Reeves with uh Robert Pattinson is March 4th, 2022. And the Flash is really? supposedly that's, that's supposedly okay. those are those are obviously tentative, right? Like those are definitely yeah. not hardcore. You know what's dates. been really weird is not seeing com- or uh, trailers for a lot of these. For movies, anything you know? really, and and uh, there's a lot. Like, like there's no Godzilla s- just got dropped. What like what was it two weeks ago? And the movie's coming yeah. out next month or in yeah. uh, two months. Yeah, much. it's pretty quick. To be fair, I feel like trailers had already been somewhat doing that. Granted, they'd been doing a better job of like doing teaser trailers online and then starting trailers yeah. later. Um, but so those are all of the um. DC ones coming up. We got Aquaman and stuff later in 2022, etc. But that's okay. yeah. Um, obviously we had WandaVision this year. We're getting what Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Next, uh, yeah, next month. Black Widow should be in May. Theoretically, Loki is also supposed to release in May, but we'll see. Um, July for Shang Chi, but we'll see. Eternals November, but we'll see. And then Spider Man December. But we'll see. There's uh, rumors going around that. Um, what if Anne uh, Hawkeye or William Defoe is uh, on set for Spider Man? <laughs> I'm still. Did you hear? Did you hear all the stuff that just dropped for Thor: Love and Thunder? Oh yeah, I seen. I seen some of the the pictures that got leaked. They were they were wearing, confirming like, rock and roll kind of stuff. They did that, but they were they were confirming a lot of stuff. They were confirming, um. The Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, they stuff. were in there. Yeah, that's they right. They confirmed yep. uh, that that James Gunn was doing character consulting for him, and then Pratt got seen with uh, Hemsworth. So yeah, just little cool. stuff I'm like excited. that, and then some scene photos. After we learned about Christian Bale being Gore the God Butcher, my excitement for that movie definitely hyped up, especially because I'm interested to see how uh, Tegu does with. A character like that especially given how and once again people are always like oh the last thor movie is so light which definitely is a jokey movie and it's much lighter in tone than a lot yeah. of the other thor movies but it absolutely has very heavy moments of drama right like where things happen or serious moments that are not comedic right and are mm-hmm. sad or happy whatever and so i'm interested to see because he had taken hella who is a serious character right but t- is was not pushed as this heavy necessary threat. Like, she was a threat, obviously. We all knew it. But she never felt like this big impending doom, right? She's mm-hmm. always just going to rule Asgard, take over. Whereas Gore is somewhat different. I feel like he's a very big impending doom kind of character. You know what? Like, obviously, he's not killing everyone. But for the gods, it's like, all right, I'm coming for all of you and your children. <laughs> um, right. And so, for me, I just sometimes wonder how... And not saying he's going to do bad or anything. I just wonder how he's going to do the diametrics of his traditional kind of his style of a more lighthearted mm-hmm. storytelling with the de- the depth of the character that is kind of gore. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not to say he can't and that we haven't seen it before in Marvel specifically even. But just an interesting thought and of something I'd want to see, especially with Christian Bale playing gore. And we all know how he likes to play characters. Has anyone told him he does not need to become a tentacle-headed alien with, and lose his family? <laughs> someone tell Christian Bale to save his family. No. Um, we'll we'll okay. see Yeah, well, how that turns out. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Just even see the Jane Foster Thor. That's going to be pretty cool. I'm I think it's going to be all pretty down. interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see the Jane Foster Thor, but I feel like Jane Foster in, 
in the MCU is not <clears throat> as uh, established as she was in the comics. You know what I'm no. saying? Yeah, yeah, I see. What you, yeah, no, I see what That's, you mean. So I mean, it'll yeah. be interesting to see, but I'd like to see how they do it. I'm honestly almost more excited for the Loki television series, even though I had that forgotten about too. it. it. It did look good, and they had released a trailer too, which is wild yeah. that we got that before the Winter Soldier trailer. But Winter Soldier is coming out before Loki. <laughs> is um, that a little funny? I don't know. A little bit. <laughs> this I was gonna say. Like um... There is a trailer you should check out, though. Uh, it is coming out February 12th. Um, Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland? That sounds... Like... It's with uh, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> oh, God. And it's like a Five Nights of Freddy horror movie, basically. And I am so down for it. <laughs> There's, a, I guess, another movie he played that was a horror movie uh, like a few years back that he played that was really good as well. I have to check out. Um so there's that one, but uh, yeah. So this is just something he's doing, kind of crazy. He doesn't really speak too much in this film, um, but he he is whooping some butt on some uh, animatronic uh, killers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that looks pretty exciting. I don't know, like I said, I, I like stuff like that, uh, kind of uh, campy, goofy, kind of horror stuff like that is cool. Every I think once it's, in a while. I think it's for me. It's all dependent on execution because some I really like and some. I don't, and I think a lot of it comes down to how they execute it, the story. Yeah. So I feel like when they're uh, when they're obvious about it, I'm better. I'm okay with it more. Like when they're very <laughs> overt and they're like, "Yes, this is horror," but we're also obviously doing comedy, so there's gonna be a ton. Whereas I feel like the ones who are trying to be like, "Oh, we're so clever with our horror puns and our things," and you, you know what I mean, we're not we're not hammy. And yeah, I was like, "No, no, be hammy, be." <laughs> no, like no, but and, uh, but that's also just a personal. But there's a yeah. I mean, I love ones, you know. Um, obviously, you got classics like Evil Dead and mm -hmm. uh, new stuff as well, like Tuck and Dale versus Evil, or you know, there's a bunch of different ones. It's a very, I feel like it's a very established genre now. Uh, what was that one mean you watched on Netflix? Uh, Thanks Killing. Yeah, that one was really over the top, though. Like that really, one was like... too much, but I feel like it was also that one was suffered from bad production value. So yeah, that that's that was well. that's that's kind of that production team's anyway. That's, that's all they that's do. their they, thing. They, yeah, that they, they're cartoony yeah. and joking. Those, that one was extreme, but it's but I just feel like it's more established now. You know what I mean? Now they make them a, a wider variety of them with like you'll have some good, some bad. And you just kind of like find your good <laughs> horror movie. I do. Oh. I will say, like, anytime Nick Cage is in anything, he's just kind of a funny guy to me. But uh, yeah, we'll see how he does. I mean, yeah, check out the trailer after we're done. But uh, yeah, you might, I, I was you might looking at some of the cover pictures, and they look funny. <laughs> I like how they give him like a neck beard, typical neck beard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Um, and I was just gonna say, uh, Tony qu uh, put on a uh, comment saying that um, who do you think is gonna win Kong on the on the new uh, movie here. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you watch the Japanese trailer. It looks like uh, Godzilla's woman. So it's, I don't know if you've seen that they do have the differences between uh, you the know, two trailers. I feel it's like still... it's going to be one of those ones where they're just going to end up teaming up on each, uh, here's, with each other. Here's yeah. the thing. is The real question is, do you, are you asking who I think is going to win or who I think should win is the real question for Tony. <laughs> You think am I? Are we asking who's gonna win or who should win? Because if we're asking who's gonna win, it's probably gonna be Kong, and then Mechagodzilla is gonna show up, and he's gonna need Godzilla's help to beat Mechagodzilla. That would be my guess, just random with what information I have now, <laughs> or vice versa, right? But that would be my guess, is based on past movies and their want to like filter nostalgia. Now, if you're asking who should win in a fight. It's fucking Godzilla. Gorillas are not actually like be the great combatants in the animal world. <laughs> well, they just did a, a, I guess, a poll on it, right? Like, who's like the top best kaiju's ever? And of course, Godzilla was number one. And oh, actually, yeah. King Kong rated number five on that list. Yeah, he's not. Um, and honestly, like, classic Kong is not nowhere near as big as some of the monsters that we see you know what i mean Classic well, and in this one too they actually even sized him up for this oh huge uh, way yeah, he's way he bigger not than classic huge in the kong skull island movie no no not at all ago. once again the, the i think the biggest kong this I is by far the biggest that, kong. i think they had said he was still They're, growing they did still, say he was still growing like that. or that he was young but we, we'd have the, i hope they explain it more in this one and kind of give 
because it seems like they're going to make it a very historical thing where it's like throughout time kong and godzilla fight fucking yeah no that sounds interesting i like that whole idea oh, no like i'm, I'm up for it yeah war and they yeah and they i'm, um, I'm yeah, up for it but that's how i see it going then they got we're probably going to get mecha godzilla to try to beat up godzilla you know because yeah. that's what you know the government does to beat up godzilla <laughs> to be fair godzilla wilding in this one uh no <laughs> uh but if you're asking who should win, yeah, gorillas are not great fighters in general. Like, in I did the like animal that they world. gave them that axe, though. That, like, <laughs> if you gave them tools and weapons, then it's a whole other story. <laughs> but, like, shit, give them a giant gun, man. Bang! No, um, but just in general, like, gorillas do have interesting weapons and stuff, but they're not great. They're not instinctually fighters because they're not predators. Like, based on his design, right? Like, we don't necessarily know... But well, we assume that Godzilla is a predator, right? He's got eyes on the top of his head, uh, which is a mark of a predator. Uh, he's got claws and teeth that are meant to like rip and tear as opposed to like dig. And he has like forward locomotion like a crocodile, which suggests he swims after shit. I don't know. Those are just generally basic like animal things where it's like, all right, well, what happens? Even beyond being a nuclear energy plant, Godzilla's probably got the upper hand on Kong in the fight. Mm -hmm. Well, so other than that, then, so uh, up on our other list, too, here, okay, um, so we have um, Tom and Jerry as well comes out February 26th. That's the new uh, hybrid one, isn't it? Yeah, the animated. With, yeah, we like, talked uh, to animation, live action. Live action yeah, which and, is good. Uh, I think it'll be good. I mean, the I don't know. The first trailer good did look as good to me, but the second one that you think they just came out with actually showed a little bit better uh, of the movie, I think. So I, I think nice. it's, it's going to be pretty good, I think. It'll, it'll be fun to watch, you know. It's a Tom and Jerry, so I oh, really yeah. shouldn't expect too much, <laughs> much mean, from the Tom and Jerry movie. But I mean, well, uh, uh, it's, it's rough for me because the truth is, while most cartoon movies are kind of up or down, classics and and things like tom and jerry used to make really heavy story driven cartoons you know what i mean that were not all about animation i remember things like balto um balto's always yeah it was always a good yeah one. and there are examples not saying tom and jerry specifically just in animation there are these times when we get these heavier stories and sometimes even in our more famous or favorite animations they'll slip them in these more important or deeper more memorable stories that we can enjoy obviously i'm not saying it's gonna like win every an oscar or some but but i don't know <laughs> i always try to like i try nowadays to go into movies with fresh minds because you just never know if it's gonna be good or bad either way yeah even something you like or don't like uh or thought you may, would or wouldn't like can be totally off center one way or the other um because like i honestly went into wandavision uh a little hesitant because i was like i've been reading a lot of bad shit about it and i was like look i i don't know man i'm seeing bad stuff i'm not excited right now i'm mm -hmm. i'm hoping i won't be disappointed and then i watched it and i i really enjoyed it so i was like all right well i really enjoy this so i really gotta like not do that because i do the same thing when i go and watch movies when they're overhyped i'm like oh man they've said this is gonna be the greatest movie ever and it's it's like the best dopest thing released in the five years, and then I watch it and I pass out. I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm <laughs> sad now. Like you just gotta kind of like let a movie and a thing do what it what it does yeah. and decide if you like it for yourself. And then you can kind of break it down critically, right? Afterwards, and be like, all right, even if I don't like this, maybe it's critically better than I enjoy it for what it is, you know? Because I always think that way with um. Things like Squirrel Girl or where it's like, yeah, I don't like them. But critically speaking, they're, they are well developed and written characters that have yeah. nuances and and a purpose. And you know what I mean? So like you can't just discount something because you don't like it or you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. but going into that, I was very hesitant with a lot of these new ones. I'm like, just ah, man, cause sometimes they do be messing up bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad yeah. you did. It ended up pretty great, though. So that no, that's it's good. did good. Uh, how did you feel about the most recent? I mean, we're trying not to do too many spoilers, but how did you feel about the last uh, reveal this last week? Um, it was good. You know, it was it was a good reveal. I liked it. It was uh, getting us, you know, closer to the to the end here and uh, getting that big giant <laughs> climax at the end for what oh. this whole is going to be. I think but, we uh, all kind of knew that this is what the series was. And I think that's why no, yeah, I'm enjoying and, it so much. Yeah, and um, 
yeah and it's just been cool you know it was it was really i was trying to figure it out because like i didn't see that first i was like wait that's quicksilver but that's not the one oh, that we know. yeah it's like wait it's quicksilver oh, sh- no i saw that and i was immediately I was like because i at, at first it took me a second it took me longer than i wanted it to to um figure some things out so when there's someone at the door i'm like oh man who's it gonna be i'm like oh it's gonna be you know I, you know, I thought kind of put it, I had something kind of different in my head, but I just didn't think. I, I, that. I didn't know it was going to be this, right? Like, I knew she was going to pull it like that, but I didn't know it was going to go immediately towards that. And then, obviously, once it happened, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. We all kind of knew this was coming. But beforehand, I was just kind of like, it was like a lingering thing where I was like, well, of course she's going to bring back Pietro, right? Mm-hmm. But... But and she was very confused why he was there too. So I'm, yeah, I'm a it little... seems I think it's one of those conscious unconscious things, and one of those. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know how they're going to reconcile. Maybe it be a villain who maybe it's not even really him. Maybe it's a villain. In right. This... I don't know. But then we'd well, have to like, why happen. would it look like him? You know what I mean? Obviously, could have just done it to fuck with us. But but if it yeah. is actually you no, know, and there's so many questions. I think that was the whole great like. I I told uh, somebody, my friend, they were like, how was it? I was like, I literally, like, finished the episode the other day, and I was just, like, fucking yell, like, not yelling, but I was just out loud going, what the fuck? For, like, two minutes straight, like, what the fuck? Like, not, like, angry or anything, just, like, what, where, and how are they going to, like, push it? Like, obviously, we know there's something there, and we've known but the the style they're bringing it in is just the left curve, you know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. or a curveball. It was definitely a little bit out of left field where it's like we all knew something was coming, and we all knew in that episode that because they had kind of led up to it, talking about you know her brother. Didn't you have a twin? Yeah. And it's like I did. And yeah, there. I mean, there's so many questions. The kids, right? The kids are a big question still. Huge. Well, there's. They're saying that they they may be already uh, uh speed and Wiccan is already what people are already because they if you look the kids when they're ten years old Wick the Wiccan's kind of wearing his signature colors. No, they, they had a bunch of stuff like there was tons and they they share the names. It's Tommy and fucking Billy, so it's the same. Yeah, right. Names. That's another thing. Yeah, same. Names they they were like, they oh. they'd been there since they showed up. It was a huge so yeah. I'm, spoiler. I'm so I'm just wondering. Yeah. Do. And, and then, like, are so they going to keep those kids? Like, are, are right. like, and are so, they going to The other thing is, even, even just the with gun? the, even just with the concept of, like, even beyond that, right? Like, everything else in there is made from something else. And we've determined that they're all people, right? If you pull in the clothes, they're made from clothes Whatever they wearing. were wearing. They just so that's real, reality alteration, right? Mm-hmm somewhat i guess it's reality warping but it really isn't because reality warping is to bend reality itself right mm-hmm. not to manipulate reality rip, manipulate, manipulation oh. whereas in my opinion uh man, re- reality warping is saying like gravity is no longer gravity right gravity spaghetti yeah. now or some shit because you just don't have to follow the laws of physics anymore that's not what reality manipulation is which is taking right matter and material and transforming it into your uh purported purpose right mm-hmm. um i don't know it's definitely interesting it's super great to see the power display i think like yeah because we, all, we, we all always kind of knew she was pretty most the most powerful one i think because like you remember at the end of like a the they sh- yeah they endgame. show in the end game for was, sure which i'm still part. i'm still a little rough with because in in the comics uh, Thanos is um, is highly um, not immune, but resistant to reality warping effects. Even they show that in the original Infinity uh, arc, where he's passing through different layers of reality with very little, like his face is melting into puddles. Oh, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, and That's he's just Thanos like he, one, yeah, and yeah, when he's, yes, looking, for the when he's looking for the stones. Yeah, it's actually his Thanos quest is right before the Infinity first Infinity uh, Gauntlet run. But the, I love it because he talks about it. He's like, you know, the, you know, reality changes. Glass becomes air. It, it ma- reality matters little to Thanos, you know. And obviously comic Thanos and movie Thanos being different. But we were making the same assumption on Scarlet Witch, right? So, and I don't know. It's always been up and down for me because I felt like that was one of my only issues with Endgame that kept it from being a perfect movie for me were some of the things revolving Captain Marvel, like... 
you have this character that's so uberly powerful that you never really gave a good explanation for why they weren't there in the first place. Yeah, I mean, gallivanting around the galaxy, but we literally don't know what exactly they were even doing. Or I what wonder they if they'll explain that in two. Two, right. I, I don't think they really gave us I don't a even think answer. they've... Have they greenlit two? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, two's I didn't know. If, I didn't know if they had greenlit it yet, which, I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, I, I shouldn't talk shit. Wonder Woman 2 did excellent money-wise, and... But man, the critics on are hitting it hard on a lot of sides. Like from the community mm-hmm. and from Rotten Tomatoes, I've heard a lot of rough talk. And it's not to say that it's not a good movie necessarily. It just does not meet the standards that I want my Wonder Woman movie to be at, similar to some of the other DC stuff I've seen. Like I really like the first Wonder Woman. Like it's probably my still my favorite DC movie. Which maybe that'll change with Suicide Squad too, but it it's weird to say that this Wonder Woman. I mean, it's still like it a little better than like BVS, the regular cut, maybe not the ultimate cut. And I don't know. It's it's always rough, right? Like because mm-hmm. these these movies are not made in bubbles, right? If they were made in bubbles and they were singular releases that had no connection to other parts of their universe and had no, uh forbearance prequel sequel fucking related movie that's not even really a prequel or sequel but they show up in it (laughs) like i I mean so things like that can really affect right so like wonder woman 2 without wonder woman 1 is actually a better movie in my opinion because you you're not getting the repeat of some of the tropes from the movie to movie right Movie mm-hmm. one and two are very similarly just kind of about like obviously there are deeper conceptual messages, right? Like how to give up what you you desire and sacrifice for the greater good, so like that. Don't get me wrong, I understand that crap. But when you break down some of the more basic motivations for a movie, right? Like in plot wise, it's Tre- Steve Trevor. It's Steve Trevor. It's you know what I mean. These things that are a little more repetitive across the the realm, whereas if you just look at Wonder Woman 2 without looking at Wonder Woman 1, you don't compare it in that way, right? You don't compare it to the first Wonder Woman's plot. You just take its plot for what it is. It's it's more, it's more better in its vacuum, right? Uh-huh. I don't know. Same way for me that um the American version of Death Note, the live action, is, is terrible. Wait, which one are we talking about? Are we talking about the American one? Yeah, the, the live American? action American one. Okay. So the <laughs> is an awful adaption. Like one of the worst anime adaptions ever made. You know what's but funny? Though, in a like vacuum, never watched right? That in movie. a vacuum, it's fine. In a vacuum, it's yeah. made well, but it's when you compare it to the source material that's the problem, right? By itself, it's honestly oh. not a bad movie. Like there's still some maybe some issues here and there, but the acting isn't super bad. The characters are semi interesting, and more mm-hmm. importantly. Uh, without the comparison to the original L, who is a more, you know, very cold, calculating, the main character's uh, reactions make more sense and are more palpable, right? Uh L is like the exception, the smart guy who picks up the, the notebook and is taking over business. But this, the Death Note from America was really like some jackass got the book and just has no clue what the fuck he's doing. Which mm-hmm. is really what would people would do, right? Like regular people. My favorite part is up. still the scream. Oh yeah. When he when he first meets uh, Ryu. <laughs> yeah. I, like, oh. I think my favorite part of the movie is absolutely still. Um, uh, God damn it! Uh, did it... God, I can never remember his name, even though I love him as an actor. He's in a ton of movies I love. But Ryuk, yeah. Um, the... Why is his name escaping me? I still wish, if he weren't so old now, I'd probably still cast him as the Joker. But uh, Are we talking about William Defoe? Defoe, it's Defoe. I don't know why I always forget, because I love him in Boondock Saints. I love him in fuck. He's a, in a bunch of great shit. Yeah, he's a good actor. He's a good him. actor. Um, and I think he definitely makes that movie for me in a lot of ways, despite not being in a super yeah. ton. He made a great read. I thought he. Did that was the only actually. reason why I kind of wanted to watch it. Yeah, that was, was like, the oh, reason I watched it because I don't. I, I really try not to watch live action American versions of anime. They're always, almost always awful. 
the and the Japanese live action versions are not usually very good. Barely a couple. Yeah. Bleach, yeah, okay, Roroni yeah. Kenshin. Bleach was pretty good. I yeah, but those are those those are the exceptions, is what I'm saying. Usually they are not that good. They no. are they're usually below that quality, and and those are pretty good, but they're not like they're not what I want them to be. Right? I want um maybe not even a Marvel movie quality, but a higher quality um adaption. And that's something I feel like we don't always get. If I can get this camera back up. Oh my god. It's camera died on you. Always, man. I, one day I'll switch and get the I, and put the webcam, but I got to get the new one in 1080. Because uh, this says the old one's not in that. <laughs> Lazy to buy um, the new one. So what, what have you been reading on comics then? Nothing so far? Um, I've been catching up on a lot of manga, Attack on Titan, One Piece uh i need to do more dr stone because i really enjoy that one i've been re i read that one before it was an anime it was really good it's really like a nice like explain i i feel like it's something you could show in school to help kids understand simple scientific processes that's Which how well made it is uh dr stone oh yeah dr stone yeah that one's been really good i can't wait till the season comes back i think uh this month actually i'm excited for it like i said i'd, I'd read it back as the uh comic which is a little better at its diagramming and stuff but i mean it's not that different so hmm. and it's and i think they do still do a really good job on the animation of it so it, i'm not at all mad uh but uh the 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 real thing about the manga stuff is it's been popping off for the last couple of years. So I'm watching it like build in the collective consciousness and trying to stay ahead. But now there's so much stuff that it's hard for me to even catch up hmm. with all the different stuff. Like I've just started a new anime series called uh, for the reactions called So I'm a Spider Now, So What or some shit. It's an isekai, and it's. I think uh, I uh, was reincarnated as slime. Just came back too. Yeah, it? they just hit theirs. I'm a little sad for that one though, because although I gotta go read the light novel to see how how it does, because they've passed the manga now. They they they're mm -hmm. caught up in passing the manga for sure. Um, so I don't know what they're gonna do. Uh, even with uh like things like Overlord, right? Like Overlord would only get another season, and then mm -hmm. it'd be caught up with the light novel so because i actually went and read the light novel um i've been enjoying attack on titan we're on episode five i think that I'm, one's the same it's, way it's uh, it's damn near finished in the comics yeah. and it's yeah. it's almost no, yeah. like what what just happened i'm guessing it was just it wasn't too long ago the whole gabby thing happened right or was that yeah, so, so, so you yeah. guys just got back to par uh, paradise right or some shit yeah and then aaron infiltrated their yeah their um their side of the place and then kind of that's where it ended off right now so far, yeah but, so you um, guys are maybe 20 or 30 chapters behind which is maybe five or eight, six episodes when you cut them down <laughs> the way they do go well you know and they're probably even more because i'm watching the dub version and we're on episode five i think sub is on episode eight i want to say yeah right i mean they'll be closer but they'll they'll still be you so know the next episode where they're gonna finally show the um the warhammer titan which we've never seen before so i was a little interested in that for next oh episode. okay i know where you're I at then yeah fight, fight so scene. like yeah you basically entered into the last arc not too long ago and this is the last arc it's done yeah and yeah. I, I once again i said. i even really, said that their final season <laughs> i really <laughs> enjoy uh attack on titan but it's one of the ones where i feel like uh rick and morty fans are the same way where it's just like if you don't like this it's because you're not big brain it's like all right, all right i guess I mean, so it's... <laughs> it's fine it's just it's it's done yeah. in a style, right? It, yeah. For people who have never read Berserk or uh, Eden is Wonder, you know what I mean? Or like mm -hmm. these dark, uh, uh, Senin-ish shonens that are where the hero is a, is twisted and like broken, right? That's mm -hmm. the concept. I'm sure for people who have never read anything like that, Attack on Titan is like a a, a holy grail of like I'm you know new amazing writing but this is not a new genre and it's not a new concept right like things like this like even death note death note is very similar contextually right not in battle but if you consider mm -hmm. the protagonists and their positions as they move along right becoming more powerful becoming more jaded 
become right being willing to do worse and worse things in or in order to pursue their goals kind of stuff mm -hmm. even death note has been very interesting in that regard uh yeah there, no, i've, there I've, things, I've so. just i've liked attack on time for i like it you know, the, the the you know for where it's come especially you know because at first you know you're just like oh it's just these guys getting eaten by times but then you just like you go more into it and you're just like oh gosh there's a whole conspiracy going on then you find out like they're not the only freaking ones on the they're not they're on the island this whole time and then you're like oh, yeah. there's a whole another society that's like living large and fine with cars and everything you're like Wow. So I mean, I it's kind of, for sure it's come a long way it's, from like it's that definitely story interesting to, uh, to I, I as like a development. Uh, but once again, like my fans with with Attack on Titans is not the series, but the fan. It's always yeah. the fans, bro. It's yeah. Similar to right Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Dragon Ball Z actually has issues, right? Like of its own, regardless of yeah, its fans. But then even then, too, like the fans would be like, "Well, oh, well, the fans are an issue too." It's yeah, great. but it's a but, good joke. but having said that, like I don't have any specific big issues with Attack on Titan as a show. Like as a story, yeah. it's well rounded. It's it's well made. There are like mm -hmm. nitpicky things I could be like, "Oh, well, Couple, this yeah. is maybe not the best. Uh, this is maybe copping out." But relatively speaking, towards some other shonens and show and stuff like that, it's really well written. It's very well rounded. Yeah. My problem is once again people who enjoy it so much that they belittle anyone who doesn't enjoy what they enjoy. <laughs> uh so for instance, like I do very I've tried very hard to always temper myself when watching things and be like, all right, like one piece is fun, but if people don't like one piece, it's because they don't like it. Like that's it. It's 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 good and it statistically does very well, right? Is yeah. it is critically well and I can break it down in an objective stack. But the fact is it is not like the end all be all. And if someone doesn't like it, they just it's a, it's art, right? It's subjective. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna it's convince like somebody. Watch, it's like I don't watch Naruto and people are like, Wow, you don't watch Naruto? I'm like right, which I don't watch it because it, I feel like that's like the like the one thing like everyone says I watch, like, oh I watch anime, I watch Naruto. I'm like I always that's felt Dragon Ball Z is And freaking, then maybe that too. Dragon yeah, Ball Dragon Z, Ball Z, Z the is next, a It's either Naruto or Dragon Ball Z. I'm like... Now it's going to okay. be Demon Slayer, though, to watch. Now, so you get yeah, I watch Demon Slayer. And Demon Slayer is very much the same for me. Like, people... It's good. It, it's good. And it's don't get me wrong. Thing. Right. The people are very much like, oh, you don't think Demon Slayer is the best to, to ever be made right? And once again, people do with every anime, but this the animes that are doing really well and are made very well because partially of being a good series and also partially because of the time right like yeah mm -hmm. attack on titan and Kimetsu new yaiba are doing really well they have excellent animation studios that make anime you could not have made 10 years ago like literally yeah. physically could not have made them yeah i mean yeah that's um, why i love attack attack for those those really cool fight scenes with I, you know their... yeah i will say that was one thing about so i'm a spider so what that was interesting is they used a lot of 3d cgi for Did a they? series it wasn't you, uh, bad though it's just interesting like how they you should check it. out um the next show that they just came on well, that next our next show um studio ghibli just came out with a new movie oh yeah was... we talked about it the um the it, all the new one the that uses cgi yeah it yeah, was done like by a son right movie. Well, Your actually, the witch, so right? it was done by his grandson, I grandson? guess, Goro. It's, it's Goro Miyazaki. Your wig and which the is, witch? It, yeah. Isn't that it or something? Because even his son still is on the, the boat of, like, Miyazaki that I don't like to do CGI too much. It's his, it's his, that son's son's. That, right <laughs> and it's, it's just it. kind of thing yeah it's earwig in the witch i've heard good things i remember we had showed it's, the uh trailer on okay. one of the early episodes it, was a, it wasn't all right you know i like the cgi that was all done well but again i just you just don't get the same from that like that hand animation that they're just yeah for, i think you know? i think there's something about doing things by hand that's just a little different obviously there's looks and feels to everything right but Something about it's hand like animation is just, it's, you know, being, you know, in the actual well, CGI. Well, I mean, and I always, rem I, like... I'm always reminded of it, like, certain things, like, are not, are added by the artist, right? They understand how movement works so they can draw it that way. And even if they don't understand how movement works, they understand how it should look in the animation. And it's something that even if you recreated it in a real physics engine, it wouldn't do, it wouldn't. You couldn't recreate that in a physics engine, right? Like, uh -huh. you, I guess you could if you worked really hard in the same way, but it it's something that you have to look at and naturally feel it. It's not something you can, like, pound numbers into to get correctly, I feel like. Yeah. 
I mean, it was still good. I, I'll give them that. They did put a lot of money into it, and you could you can tell that the CGI was done very well in there. It's just again, I for Studio Ghibli, I've always just known them to be that hand animation. It, it's so funny like to me too because I feel like their clean the cleanliness of their hand animation is very not CGI ish but very almost standardized ish to mm-hmm. me, which is not bad yeah. at all. But it's just that's how clean Ghibli always yeah. does its lining and it's and it's what sucks is you know it's it's a dying art you know hand that hand it's animation. Just I mean, and even if they tough. are doing drawing, it's done on the computer. And they're just drawing on the it's computer. It's just so much more convenient. And it is. It is. It is. Like to have to do a whole other page, whereas with the computer, I can draw the outline of the face yeah, and yeah. copy paste it to oh, the yeah. next page and it's, draw the rest of the face. There's so many better. things. Like, and there are still people out there to do it, but I think between the time it takes for one, that's the other thing is the time consumption for they, hand they drawing is so just long on their movies it's just i remember that's why it used to take forever to for things to come out it took upwards of three four years for animated movies to be made I think. <laughs> now we get movies really quick for kids so it's really fast six now. months throw in a, throw them in a, a character reproduce us <laughs> take a picture uh, it reminds me of the bojack horseman season where they're like here we're gonna take a uh a, f- a mocap of you so that if you don't show up for the last thing we can just <laughs> CGI you on top of someone. I was like, God, that's probably wild and probably happens all the time to a minor extent. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's definitely just wild. Got the movie, though. I mean, ending was like, it kind of left you like, what? But you're just like, I guess, let me think about it. And you're like, okay, I guess. But whatever. Give me that ending. Uh, but right, still, you do what you can. I thought it was, I thought it was cool character, character wise. Uh, again, CGI was still done very well. Uh, you could see the emotion very well into everything, and Good. just the story could have been maybe tweaked up a little bit. I think it just could have been explained a little bit better in some parts, hmm. and and then give us a better, a little they, bit. They keep putting ending. out Wandavision stuff on Marvel. They just put out like a sixteen One second vision. teaser for no reason. This is sixteen seconds on Marvel. This is wild. Too much. I mean, it's their first thing for the year, so and then it's been a whole year. Yeah, so we have been we're waiting. Gonna, yeah, they gotta market. make some money. Crazy. They gotta make some money. Uh, um, let me see for anything else on my list here. Um, so I know we got the Falcon uh, trailer, which looked pretty good. I am excited for that. Um, and then we got, let's see. Talk about Godzilla King Kong. Uh, Ooh. Oh, Sandman's actually. I forgot about that. I did that hear today. they finished casting for that. Yeah, that's yeah, going to be interesting. Have, um... I don't know. It's really rough for me because I feel like that series is good, but I don't know how palatable it is for the general public. We'll see. Yeah, because, I, you know, I Lucifer no is not even to what it is. And I've heard in the comic books, like the show on CW, I've heard. I mean, I guess it depends different. on what you're like, what one, what run of Roos, Lucifer you're referring okay. to. Two, it's about context, right? In that sense, none of the characters are stacking up to their comic counterparts in the movies or the television shows, right? Uh-huh. Like they just can't do it. It's not realistically feasible for story writing. And to be fair, I mean, even in the comic writing, we shit we shit on them a lot of the time for their not staying consistent right like not being adherent to the characters what the character Mm -hmm. or we what we think the character should be or should do um and so for me while i did feel like that lucifer was definitely not on par i think with a little bit of what obviously the one in the comics was i felt like there were a lot of good reasons and honestly sometimes better reasonings in the show his character was definitely more akin to the second run of lucifer and not neil gaiman's original run um or whereas the newest run and the first run have lucifer as this very much more dark kind of bitter character right Uh as opposed to a jovial kind of uh life will what it will and i'll do whatever i want character he's definitely a very different character wise personality wise um uh, i guess the hair color is always their big thing but that wasn't really my thing i will say that he does do a good job in acting the character out the way i think it should be played and for the tv show but Mm -hmm. 
But it's interesting because once again, I started Lucifer after having read Lucifer, then went back and read Lucifer again to watch Lucifer, and it was, it was interesting. So, like, okay. as a long-standing Lucifer fan, I don't have any big problems with it. Nice. But I, okay. I understand it's an interpretation of the character. It's not the uh-huh. same character as, you know, game its original Lucifer. It's not. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see then here. Biomutant, which is... Oh, really Biomutant? Uh, uh, mutant. Yeah, oh, Biomutant. Yeah, Biomutant. Bio-mutant. Yeah, Biomutant is supposed to be coming out on May 25th. I heard Biomeat. I was yeah. like, shit, I didn't know they started making an anime for that. I thought that thing was dead in the water. No, this is, yeah, this is Biomutant. You should check that out. It's really, it looks like Bio-mutant. some good, uh, you basically play as a furry. Uh, oh, I do remember that one from the, uh, from the showcase. It looked cool. Yes. I was yeah, really interested. Yeah, they finally got a release it. date. It comes out March 25th, they said. My thing is, Where's I that? still gotta go get a PS5. Like, I know I don't have to because it's on the four, but I'm I want to experience them in in the newer kind of tech that they've somewhat been. It's been nice but... because you know it's nice that console players can now play at that sixty frames per second, and yeah, um, I think that's probably the big huge step up. Gotta catch up to that one twenty uh... now. Now it's like. <laughs> Well, there's a couple. I I guess it can do 120 as yeah. well. Um, you could play Halo, uh, the collector's edition right now, the 120 frames per second, but that's only in multiplayer, I believe. And that has to be probably with Halo 4, I'm guessing, or maybe 5. Most likely the most recent one. Yeah. Oh, um, so there's that. Yeah. And then the, the other big thing is just the quick resume where you're able to just, you know, start up your games like that really fast. And then the load times are big, huge difference as well, too, for nice. these consoles. So... That's what I think the most most things I'm more excited about. And then I guess 4K has been pretty good too as well. I haven't been playing yeah. too many games with the 4K stuff just yet. So You said um, you had gotten your 4K TV, right? Or was it you? Yeah, I, I did. Cool, I did, yeah. Um, as we talked recently. about that, yeah. Where I knew I knew I had to get mine when I had run my same stuff because it was for the computer. To yeah, there's editing. a couple of things. Yeah, you make sure that you, you gotta get watch yeah, out for it. It's got to watch out for UHD and HD versus stuff. And it's always mm-hmm. fun. Uh, yeah, it's fun do we researching have, everything. Do we have anything else we got coming up? Uh, uh, yeah, let, let me see here before yeah, we get off here. I know we have, oh, March 26th, we have uh, Mighty Ducks is coming back. Okay. And we have Court Gordon coming back. Okay, to I was, t- was going to ask which Mighty Ducks, but I should have known because the animated Mighty Ducks is in hell and it's never coming back. <laughs> no, like, it's that Disney will not let go. Oh man! So, so there's that. I was excited for that. I that's mean, cool. kind of excited. No, I mean, that's I mean, I was never a huge Mighty Ducks fan, but I I've liked. I've watched a few of the movies, and they were. Uh, I thought I always. I mean, the first one's always being the classic, right? And then the other ones being yeah. like, if you like the Mighty Ducks, you like the next ones. Um, <laughs> but no, um, that's a good one. Um, let's see here, and then I also had we had uh, talked about uh, how Black Sonic Prime is coming back. Uh, for a Netflix animated three D animated show. Oh, I did, yeah, I did hear about that. That's gonna be interesting. Um, it won't be till next year, though. Um, yeah, so that. I'm, I'm always like hesitant about out. the animated shows on Netflix and stuff. I don't know why. Yeah. Know well, why. there's this new one you should check out that me and my son are liking. It's called Kick Cosmic and the Power Cosmic. Rings. Um, it just came out like two days ago or something like that. Me and my son are enjoying. It. I love that this animation style. It feels like a comic book kind of animation style a little bit, and. Uh, the soundtrack's cool. The characters are pretty cool, and it's it's different kind of in its own little way. And uh, creator sounds familiar. And then uh, oh, also March fourth, we have the animated CGI Pacific Rim coming out. Okay, that's where I recognize this. This is from the same creator of uh, Fosters and the Powerpuff Girls. There we go. So yeah, it's um, it it's been pretty good. I, I enjoyed the show so far. It looks pretty cool. Like I said, it, I looked at it and I'm like, this looks familiar and the name sounds familiar, but it's just the style. Mm-hmm. Still, it looks cool. Um, I mean, other than that, that's all I really had. Maybe check out some, some of these new books like right here. Maniac. Books. books. Who the hell reads anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Oh, yeah, direct that stream maniac. into my board. No. Uh, um, what else was there this week that was an on the mind, right? Because obviously we still got King and Black running and all these other side things like yeah. Future State for D. Isn't so weird that I just I don't oh, even actually, want to talk about the good. two main ones. Oh yeah, yeah, Avengers Mech Strike. 
I yeah, did that was pretty good. That. I actually like that. I told you, I really like when they try different things, like stylizing stuff. It's really more impressive to me than like doing another Batman one. No, like, <laughs> uh, um, what did we have? We had uh, Star Wars Conan High Republic issue two came out. It was actually kind of a light week in a lot of the ways. Strange Academy came out. Um, oh, I was excited for this. Oh yeah, we had talked about the Beast Wars being on the way a while ago. Yeah, that's that was been, that was a really Omni, good read. I liked Fear it. Case, Avatar, oh, Venom, the new Venom issue came out. That one's about to be ending soon. Yeah, TMT, Transformers, of course, some Star Wars stuff. I mean, there's things, but nothing like majorly amazing besides like those kind of couple. Uh, Parrot. I did want to check out this one from Boom called Luna. Oh yeah, Luna. Um, if you yeah, I've been following that artist for a while. Maria Love It is the one that does that. She's done a few books. She's got another one that just finished. Uh, it's called Faithless. It's more of a she's kind of a raunchy kind of a storyteller, <laughs> or it's not raunchy. She's more of a she's a very sexualized writer and artist. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So and very involves a lot of for other reason, uh, biting and blood you know coming <laughs> from the biting um so yeah there's a, a lot vampire. of vampire we all know there's she's a, a vampire now. <laughs> a lot of nudity for sure in her books so uh just uh when you see maria love it just expect a lot of nudity and a lot of sexualizations and <laughs> so they say is buy it for your kids people no i'm just kidding um <laughs> yeah i just finished reading her book luna actually not too long ago so that nice. one was uh it wasn't too bad. It, it was interesting. It cool. I like the art style. She looks nearly the out. same, though, from her other book, Faithless, the yeah. main character. Yeah, I, I wouldn't it. expect him to be too big of a difference. Like, it seems like a stylized pattern for that artist. Yeah, so definitely for her, yeah, because she, oh, she does all man. her work. Um, Let me see. I'll go over just my list of, I guess, what I read. So I kind of gave you a few things there. And then uh, also, oh, it looks like uh, that Black Hammer Visions comes out next week. That was the one with... um. Uh, golden gal oh yeah from, yeah from uh sorry. black hammer oh this one looked pretty good you should check that out uh children of great of the grave children of the uh, great it looks pretty interesting the the artwork is what really kind of pulled me to it um let me see if i can show you a pretty good scene here here we go this is the this is the very beginning oh huh, all right and then let me see if we could get to the. I think there was a big. Uh, cheers. Yeah, just yeah, some pretty cool stylized art. Different for sure. Yeah, about this. So far, I haven't finished reading the whole book, but so far, it's about this father who, kind of, his name's Roy Mason, and he got shot, and his wife like brought him back, and he comes back as like this zombie and everything, and. Um, she somehow brought him back from the help of this lady, and he's like, "What lady?" So she must know some type of magic. So, so uh, there's um, that book that came out. So that one's been pretty good. Uh, check that one out. I have to finish it though. Uh, Deep Beyond looked pretty good. Oh, Fear Case. Check out Fear Case. I actually really enjoyed that book. A non, uh, no nonsense Secret Service agent and his New Age partner investigate a mysterious box known as the Fear Case, which has appeared throughout history at sites of disaster and tragedy. Whoever comes into possession of this case must pass it on uh, within three days or face deadly consequences. The agents must track down the fear case while staying one step ahead of a psychotic cult and the otherworldly forces be, uh, behind the case's existence. It does sound pretty um, cool. So, yeah, that was, that was a good book. I, I did re finish reading that one. Um, King and Black, Black Knight was actually a pretty fun read. I actually now enjoy Black Knight now after reading that issue because... I didn't. I, I, he's I, didn't an, he's just a character. I feel like you don't get a lot of exposure to. He doesn't really ever get his own runs. No, and no. he's always I mean, a it's, side character for Excalibur. He's been getting pretty popular though. But in yeah, lately. But it's because they changed uh, him. They changed. Well, the that shit there's out of there's him. the speculators saying that his, his movie's coming out soon for Black Knight. I very um, much doubt that's that. What the, <laughs> that's what they. I mean, they they were right on with Moon Knight, but Moon Knight's more. But, I guess uh, also more Moon Knight isn't there. really hundred percent greenlit either. It's still in its production phases. Yeah. Or not even in production. It's still in its planning phases. It hasn't really so been pushed through. I feel like because we're still waiting on them to do. They said the same shit about New Avengers, and we're not going to get that till Hawkeye comes out. 
yeah but if, you could tell they're setting up for it for sure i don't i don't know if they will because we're not even sure we're gonna get hawkeye 100 percent at this point with the whole shit going on with jeremy rayner he's been all oh, over so I, haven't, shit, I, I haven't heard anything. yeah they, he, they've sidelined the shit out of hawkeye because of some stuff going on with jeremy rayner and without that, they don't really even have a setup for it. Maybe they'll... Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to use some of WandaVision with the twins to maybe lead into it. But they we, could. we we'll know see. that the big one that they want to do is young Hawkeye to move into that. Because nobody yeah. else has any kind of set for it right now. Like, there's nobody with that would be able to pick up... Unless you did a whole new movie like you did for Guardians, there's no lines or threads moving towards the Young Avengers yet. So I'm still waiting for that to come true before I give the speculators too much credit. They're decent on some things and then, you know, a little off on other things or I guess not even early, just maybe just super early. Like maybe in another (laughs) couple of years we'll have some more stuff. But, uh... There were because there were a couple ones that the speculators were thinking Blade was running through one. There were going to be a couple things which may we are still looking at it. It's just not done. You know what I mean? It's one of those mm-hmm. ones where we're not a hundred percent. Because for instance, we had the exact same level of speculation of both of these kind of titles as we did for Gambit. Well, they just hired now, I guess, the screenwriter for Blade. Right, but we had a director, screenwriter, and all kinds mm-hmm. of shit for Gambit. It didn't go through. We didn't get Gambit, and we're not getting Gambit. Oh, that one for sure. Well, yeah, because the Fox deal and that one for sure. Um, let's see some updates from there, Spider-Man. There will be Green. some ones. William but... Defoe, yeah, I guess again, yeah, was supposedly rumored to be on set for Spider-Man Three. I, so we'll see. I mean, we've heard a lot about the multiversity stuff uh, I going. If, so. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna. Yeah, I'm curious they've already if been. I mean, here's the thing: at this point. The fact that nobody has outright come out and said it's not happening is a bigger indicator than anything because there's so many people involved that mm-hmm. I don't know if they would be like, like no, I'm not working. And maybe they wouldn't. Maybe it's thing. But I think they're just doing their best to keep it held under wraps. And But, you know, you can't keep anything under wraps nowadays. So a little rough. Let me see something else real quick here. Oh, let me see something here. Supposedly, there is merchandise that got leaked for Wiccan and Speed. Ooh, wow, that's crazy. See, this is why I hate that they do that with the merchandising, bro. One, and I don't feel like they need to anymore. Like, nowadays, with the way production is and the way we're starting to Mm -hmm. head towards, like, you should really not need more than a couple months to get products into the stores. Right. And uh, um, I guess one other thing. Oh, that's what I forgot to ask. So the Black Panther. Did you hear about that? They're going to be doing a TV series with that. I like, know. Wakanda. Uh, I might have yeah. heard that. I didn't. I didn't know if it was going to be yeah, a Black Ryan, Panther series, though. Yeah, it's a Ryan. Well, not that, but it'll just be you know the characters of that area. But yeah. uh, Ryan, Ryan Kruger and his production company uh, has extended their deal to Disney to include a TV series based on the Kingdom of Wakanda. Hmm. Um, details are still kind of scarce, but still, it's a solid contender for inspiration um, for some of these books that are coming out. Um, I think that was. Oh yeah, and like you said, the Thor four uh, set leaks. Yep. Um, oh yeah, so there's Tooth Nasher. We got to. Yeah, see, that guess, was the that two. Was, was the uh, was that, goats? Tooth yep. Grinder was on there too. Okay, that cool. was the that was one of the new ones. Uh, we had the set leaks. They confirmed a bunch. Or maybe they weren't set leaks, but they were. And then leaks. they're saying supposedly uh, Thor kind of looks almost like he's wearing a Thunderstrike apparel. Almost interesting. I heard we did get a uh, skinny Thor back, but or yeah, we Thor. got skinny Thor back. Yeah, no more, no more uh, fat Thor, no more. <laughs> yeah, I guess some people were just so butt hurt about fat people. Nothing. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, George Clooney got casted as Buck Rogers. Um, it's I mean, not confirmed it yet, him, news, but... but it's it's a t- you know we'll see if that happens. I mean, uh, it, it yeah. works for him, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, they're supposed to still be doing that Tim Drake movie, the Uncharted movie. Um, oh I guess they're yeah, they're casting now. Huh? I feel like they could get away with it. It's just one of those ones where I'm not really. I don't care. So like, I never. I mean, I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah, a lot of people. I, I'm I sure there are people out there, right, that like it. But yeah, I just I never. Really I know played Tony the game is a I big haven't... fan of Uncharted. That's cool. So, so there'll be people. Uh, oh, I think Borderland is also coming out with the movie, and Kevin Hart has been casted. Uh, yeah, in it. <laughs> I wasn't. 
that's not giving me high hopes for so the movie. So is Jamie Lee Curtis also got casted into See, it. See, I like uh I don't know, that's also just me though cuz I'm I don't find Kevin Hart all that funny. Like he's fine, but he's not It was not good at the beginning, funny. but uh now, yeah. you know, some of his stuff's not all that great. I, I, like I said, I thought he was fine. He's just never been all that funny for me, right? Mm, like yeah. I find uh even acting wise, I find Dave Chappelle funnier. Mm-hmm. Uh you know what I mean? Acting wise, I actually think Dwayne the Rock Johnson's a funnier actor than Kevin Hart, but that's just me. Hmm. Uh, the my bigger issue with it is I don't have like uh, all right, twofold. One, I don't feel like Kevin Hart has ever showed that he excels at dark comedy. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he is more um generalized comedy really mm-hmm. i don't know maybe something else oh, there goes just the camera, camera. Yeah. yep there must so be maybe we should uh, yeah so i was gonna say <laughs> um, but yeah i mean it'd be cool i want to see how it goes i don't know enough about borderlands to really be too critical or not critical i just know from my personal experience borderlands is really i just for me a that dark movie comedy games don't do so great sometimes anyways the I mean, only movie game that has had any sonic. real success re- like sonic. good success even sonic i mean it's good is getting another that's it's not measurably successful for a movie right like for a movie franchise or series it's fine and it made its money back and it'll make another but it's no uh resident evil with seven or eight or fast and furious like it hasn't become that there's not really many video games that get that successful for movies uh-huh. for whatever reason so i mean i like the first resident evil and second one were really good then after well, whether that, or not i like them they were successful because started... they kept yeah. making movies whether, yeah. whether or not i like them is a whole nother question but success is selling for movies and they sold those movies every mm-hmm. time uh and kept getting more movies so shit there's probably another resident evil movie coming out yeah they are they're making it they're yeah. re- they're rebooting so it, it whether they're or not re- you enjoy them all the They're movie doing series it more is successful. Serious, I guess, is what I've heard to the That's, to the game. I don't know. We'll to, see. Towards the game, that'll be interesting. I guess I don't know. I I never really minded them too much. After the same thing, after three, same with Fast and the Furious. I thought it was overdone. I don't think you need more than a trilogy in a set like that all at once. Like you can do them, but you need to kind of separate the stories into arcs, and you know what I mean. Have these more collected things. I don't know. But yeah, we we're definitely hitting on our time, so uh, yeah, we'll probably tell everyone good. to have a great night. Thanks, Tony, for coming around and saying hi in the chat. And Don't be uh, dissing on this Uncharted. <laughs> diss all over it with a P. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, and we'll see you guys next week, hopefully, when there's no Super Bowl on Sunday again. So yeah. I definitely knew no one was coming by if it was Super Bowl Sunday. But yeah, all righty. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.